Well, we've got the whole team here from the Eagle Chess Knockout podcast and the flu in from Planet Chestatory. And how are you guys doing, first of all? Doing great. Doing great. Yeah, I'm doing well. Long trip. I'd say well. Yeah. So, first of all, I guess you can answer this, Ginger. What is the basic premise of the podcast for people that might not have checked it out yet? So, the basic um, idea of the story is just. It's a, it's a superhero story, and, and it's definitely anime-inspired. Mm. Um, and it's a story about a dark and evil chess master. He wants to take over the world, and he's in search of the ultimate power. And these five uh, superheroes that are based off of a chessboard where the whole entire planet is actually, it, like all their powers, everything from the chessboard comes from this planet. And that's where their powers are basically based off of. Yeah. So I take it, is it kind of a radio drama type of performance that you do? Yes. So it is kind of like a radio drama type thing. Yeah. Um, and of course it is like anime inspired, but we are actually slowly transitioning um, from it just being audio uh, to also having visual and there's going to be a lot more animation in season two as we're slowly transitioning to that yeah. thing. That's quite an interesting idea and it sounds very exciting. So good luck with that, I suppose. Thank you. <laughs> so Stephen plays the light chess master and the dark chess master and villains are kind of his thing. So I guess my question for you, Stephen, first of all, is are you like a villain in real life? Um, uh, can you hear me first of all? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Cause uh, my videos decided to do something very strange all of a sudden. <laughs> um, no, I would not classify myself as a villain in real life at mm. all. Uh, but I do have a, uh, soft spot in my heart for villains. I've always believed as a, as someone who loves a good story that, you know, your hero, uh, or heroine is only as interesting, I think, as as their villain, because the villain mm -hmm. is what uh, keys what the audience keys in on as the main uh, danger focus for the hero. So yeah. um, they root for the hero against the villain. I mean, would we would we find Spider Man as appealing if his rogues rogues gallery was all Teletubbies? Probably <laughs> not. So uh, yeah, depends I mean, on I, the Teletubby. <laughs> I do. I, I love villains. And so I, I do enjoy playing uh, the dark chess master. But uh, I mean, Mr. Williams is a great foil to that character. So there's some challenge in making those two characters as distinct from one another as possible, even you know, given their their familiar connections. Yeah, you've kind of caught me off guard a bit with the Teletubbies because I didn't realize Americans knew about them. Oh, yeah. Oh, we know about Teletubbies. <laughs> yes, oh, yes. They haunt my every waking moment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought I saw one in the corner. <laughs> and do you feel that villains have to have a kind of tragic backstory to them? Because sometimes that seems to be forgotten in a lot of films. Um, you know what? Honestly, I, I don't think so. Uh, mm. However, it does make them more compelling if they have uh, something of a tragic backstory. It, mm. it makes them feel more more human, you know, like what mm. what does it take to make uh, someone who was uh, early in their life a good person or at least a well-meaning person? What what happens to them that that turns them down the path of villainy. Um, I've always been fond of that old saying that every every villain is a hero of his own story. Mm -hmm. um, that makes villains very compelling. You know, when you realize that they they think they're doing good by yeah. by whatever their definition of that is you know and uh, that makes them dangerous and a little scary yeah i suppose that's true because sometimes they'll make a spin-off film about the villain and you end up rooting for the villain because yeah. there's a villain to the villain which is even worse mm -hmm. absolutely i mean i think uh i mean just to borrow from another mythology uh i think thanos uh, was a really compelling <laughs> villain in, in that respect, and and even to a lesser degree, Ultra. Mm. You know, when you when you can understand the villain's motivations, even if you don't agree with his or her actions, when you can understand their motivations, that that gives them a whole nother uh, dimension, another depth to uh, 
uh, who they are and, and what makes them so dangerous for our heroes. Yeah. And moving on to a couple of other characters here, Emma and Chesituri, or I don't know how you say that, but I'm going to guess. Uh, that was pretty close, actually. <laughs> Chesituri. Uh, well, they're best friends on the show, and they're played by Ginger and Valerie, respectively. So what is your friendship like in real life for these two, Ginger and Valerie, then? Well, I, mean, I would consider you one of my best friends, so the chemistry shows in the character. Agreed. You're one of my best friends. We talk almost almost every day, just about, or every other day. We call or we text, just like Emma and Jessica Terry would, actually, probably. Yeah. And do you think that the characters you play were sort of inspired by your own real life friendship then? Mm, I would probably wouldn't say so because she, mm. Ginger, thought these characters up before she met me. Ah. Um, what, you were in high school, right? Yeah. So it was a long time ago. We've, we've known each other for a few years now. Mm. So I don't... I wouldn't say so. Yeah. And going to each of you one by one, we'll see how long this takes. If you can describe your character in just one word, no more, that's all you get in one word, what word would you pick? Um, well, I would have to say for David, annoyed. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's just annoyed at everybody. I yeah. would I would describe the Dark Chess Master as obsessive. Uh, and I would describe Mr. Williams as um, protective. Yeah. And what's good is that we can see you now as well. So, mm -hmm. oh, yes. You're, you're back I'm in back. the room. Hi. <laughs> I would say uh, for Rod, uh, quirky would be a good adjective for him and his personality. Yeah. Uh, I would say Blake is probably like arrogant. Mm. He's kind of like he, he he's full of himself. Yeah. Um, for Chesitary, I would say that she's very loyal um, because she loves all the people that she is around. Um, and when everyone is kind of like slowly taken away from her, from the dark chess master, he starts kidnapping them one by one. Like she does everything that she can to try to bring them back. Yeah. I think Emma is kind of serious. Mm. I mean, she can take a joke, but she's kind of the serious. You know, she's, you know, first to strike, and you don't mess with Jessica Terry at all. If you do, that's it. Like, you're done. Yeah, absolutely. Also, this question here is for Oliver King. So, from what I've heard, you split the part of David with Daniel Dean for a while, yep. who also voiced David in a couple of episodes. But in your own words, how would you describe how the styles were sort of different and what was it like having to share a part? Because I guess in a way you perhaps don't have as much freedom to develop the character on your own. You have to kind of consult the other person. <laughs> well, um, the funny thing about me and Daniel, if you know, you can say funny, is that um, him and I play off each other really well. Mm. So, I mean, he was, you know, there the whole time when I started uh, being David and he basically just took what I did and then kind of formed it into his own thing. And then it was only recently that, um, when I came back, you know, he was still David. I was just there in case he wasn't. And mm. now I'm just back as David again. Yeah. <laughs> guess so. Yeah. I mean, it, it was fun. I mean, you know, mm. listening to him take over for me was kind of interesting. Mm. Yes. <laughs> And for Valerie and Adam, some fans of the show happen to be shipping Emma and Rod as a couple. Will there be any romance happening, or is this just rumours? And Have we already gotten news? to the, where people are shipping people now? <laughs> Apparently. That's like the best part. I mean, we only had to do one, and a half, one season, and it's already like, yes, these guys are together. Those guys, maybe, possibly, who knows? I mean, I will say this. It'd be a big disappointment in the end if they don't, as much as it's been leading up to it, really, story-wise. So, yeah. I mean, I myself ship Emma and Rod. I mean, They're yeah, so I mean, cute. They're so cute. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. I would say that's a yes. So we'll see. You just have to watch <laughs> yeah. and see. Tune in and find out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and fans are also shipping the release of the finale for season one. Any ideas about when that's actually going to be out? I can answer that question. So we did actually wrap up the finale. Um, was it about a month or two ago? About a month ago. Yeah. Yeah, about a month ago. So we actually did wrap up the finale, um, but it's still being edited because we have a better programming. So it's taking a lot more time. And of course, you know, it's the finale episode. So we kind of want to leave it with a bang. Yeah. Um, the, the hope is that it should be out either towards the end of this month or sometime in August. But um, fans can definitely expect something that they've never seen on any episode before. It's going to be the best one to date. Yeah, well, I suppose it's worth spending the extra time to make sure it's perfect and people aren't disappointed. Yes. Yeah, Rod has a dance number. It's great. <laughs> yes. I wonder how a dance number works on a podcast. <laughs> well, it, it's simple. We take stick figures and we just move shadows. Oh, interesting. I suppose you can like have footstep sound effects and stuff. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I got I got horseshoes and we just clop it along like Monty Python and <laughs> got coconuts. Did it? Did it? Did it? Did it? <laughs> yes. And any spoilers that are shareable for season two at all? Hmm. I'm going to leave that one. I'm not going to touch that one. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, well, I'm not, you, we all signed NDAs. Say, <laughs> well, you, you know, this is how people get fired from Marvel. If they ruin it. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah. <laughs> we, we may lose Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. yeah. Or Tom Holland. You never know. Mm, yeah. But they've done something smart and they've kept him away from the script. Here's your line. Say, it. that's it. Uh, that's a good idea. We, we are doing the table read for season two tonight um, uh, for the first episode so we are in production on the first episode Uh, i can say that (laughs) yeah but no sharing of spoilers just yet that's risky business i guess well i mean we could probably put it throw a trailer together after tonight but uh, (laughs) other than that i don't think we're gonna share anything at the moment um besides the dance number (laughs) i'll say this there is a there is something new and interesting that happens in mr williams life but that's all I'm going to say. Ooh, Ooh. Wait for that. <laughs> yes. It does affect Chesitary and Blake greatly. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. And the cast play different games on the YouTube channel as well. Are we able to request any games for you to play or are you just making all the decisions yourselves? No, nah, we welcome uh, our fans to like throw out suggestions for games that we can play. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. The more suggestions we get, I mean, I think we'll even have like a poll at some point to see what they want us to play. Mm, Um, There have been some comments on the YouTube channel already. Fans want us to do a 1990s quiz. So stay tuned for that one. And if, you know, if you know anyone else who has any ideas or suggestions, just tell them to reach out to us on our social media sites or, you know, the YouTube page. And, you know, I, I check the comments probably like every other day so um if they throw them out there i'm always responding and and looking to see what the fans want specifically 90s quiz i'll get all the music questions right and then everything else wrong probably (laughs) (laughs) oh that's more than me because all i can answer are 90s movies and tv culture yeah i suppose that would sort of be okay jurassic park and friends oh man dude half my family's obsessed with friends and i'm obsessed (laughs) with jurassic park so we're settled Yay! The perfect. I need a lifeline, quick, sister. What is this episode? I will put this on the list. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, where are we able to check out the podcast if we'd like to have a little listen to it? Then. Okay. So the biggest one is the YouTube channel, but we are branching out. You can actually, uh, you can follow us on Spotify. You can follow us on iTunes. Um, if you want to learn more information about the cast, we do have an Instagram page. Uh, we also have a Twitter, and we actually have two Facebook pages. Ooh. How that happened, I, I don't know, but it happened. Mm. Um, but we do have fans following on both pages. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Someone likes us. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> well, which is the real Facebook page? Do we go for the one that has more likes or, I mean, are they equal? That's a good question. Um, I don't think there's... That's a good question. 
Well, we will decide which one's the official, and then we're going to put official page.、Mm, good idea. Where everyone is the oldest, because that's like the established、hmm. first one, I suppose. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. <laughs> yeah, Ginger, get on that. Good suggestion. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for joining us on the show today, everybody. Hey, It was our pleasure.、You. Thank you. Thank you. Having can, us. I just, thank you. can I just say that、uh, I am a big fan of the artwork behind you there, Toby.、Uh, uh, I I I love the Muppet. So、yes. uh, I, I saw that and I was like, "Yay!" <laughs> <laughs> and if only you had any artwork that I could compliment. But I I love the the color of your walls. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stark white. That's just kind of like you know my whole life in a nutshell. Yeah. You interviewed the puppets guy. Or the Muppets guy, didn't you? Like yes. one of them. You've done your research. I have. <laughs> I've, well, Jim well, Henson. I've had to read a few now. I'm assuming Jim Henson Jr. No, Steve Whitmire, who took over、oh, okay. kind of yeah. after he died. <clears throat> Also,、okay. Bill Beretta, who currently does Rolf the Dog and the Swedish Chef and stuff like well, that, well and done. A few other people. Nice. Well, thanks, guys, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Comment, like, and subscribe. <laughs>